right. <clears throat> the time is now 6.35, and we are live with our Bible study. Again, I'm going to ask all of you who may uh, be on Facebook right now, go ahead and um, share with your Facebook friends and family. Let them know that we are live and Bible study is getting ready to get started. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who think it not robbery uh, to join us live in the virtual sanctuary um, for this another Bible study. Um, glad that you all are here. And those who may be on their way, we're praying for their um, traveling mercies as they prepare to uh, meet us in the virtual sanctuary. All right. Good evening. Once again, everyone, God bless you. Thank you for this time of sharing. Um, our opening scripture tonight is found in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Once again, that's Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Right where you are, let's be together with God and one another as we go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Consecrate us now for your service, Lord, by your power and your grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our will be lost in thine. God, here we are again. On this another Wednesday in the Word, we ask that you would bless our time of study tonight. Bless all that are joining us, whether they're in the Zoom space or whether they are in Facebook, uh, the Facebook family. God, we ask that you would bless them. We thank you for this time of study. We ask that you would move by your spirit, move by your power, have your way in this time of study. Get all the glory. We'll be satisfied with the blessing. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Um, to those of you who would like to uh, comment um, in the chat box, the chat boxes are open in face on Facebook as well as in the Zoom space. If you would like to have a question answered or if you would just like to say amen or reiterate a point that has been made um, during this time of study, feel free um, to put that in the chat box. Feel free uh, to also interact with each other. Um, this is a community that um, takes our time of study serious. And I thank all of you once again for taking this time out of your Wednesday evening to be with us. All right. So tonight, our study focuses on the thought, the steps for getting help, the steps for getting help. Follow me in your Bibles, if you will, to the gospel according to Mark, chapter number 10. Let's look at verses 46 through 52. I'm in the Facebook chat. Good evening to all of you that are um, saying good evening. Good evening. God bless you. Thank you for uh, tuning in. God bless all of you. Follow me in your Bibles to the gospel according to Mark chapter 10. We're going to look at verses 46 through 52. This is the picture of a man's needing help and needing it desperately. As we read this story, there is no question 
but that the man's blindness is a picture, watch this, of blindness, darkness, and needs of a world that reels in desperation for help. The need, beloved, may be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. It may be some problem with the mind, some desperate loneliness, or, tra or some tragic sin. Whatever it is, this passage will spell out for us the steps for getting help. We're going to look now at the steps for getting help. This is how verses 46 through 52 will be laid out for us. We're going to lay it out. We're going to uh, dive into it. And I'm going to bid you a good rest of your Wednesday evening. The steps for getting help. Step number one, having Jesus available to help. We're going to look at that in verse 46. Step numbers two and three are in verse 47. Believing the reports about Jesus, acknowledging personal need. These steps are in verse number 47. Verse 48, step four, enduring, persevering after Jesus. This is uh, verse 48. Verse 49 and 50, eagerly expecting to receive Jesus' help. Eagerly expecting to receive Jesus' help. Verses 49 and 50. Verse 50 and 51, requesting precisely what is needed. Verses 51 and 52. And then we'll end again by looking at verse 50, 52 experiencing the power of Jesus and following him. So these are the steps that our text lay out for us this evening. This is how we will get through this pericope on this blessed evening. Let's begin by looking at verse 46. This, uh, so we're looking at Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. Jesus had been in Jericho. How long? We do not know. Verse 46 says, and I'm reading out of the um, New King James Version. Verse 46 says, now they came to Jericho, period. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roads begging. He sat by the road begging. In the days of Jesus, Jericho was one of the most important cities of Palestine. Okay? In the days of Jesus, Jericho was one of the most important cities of Palestine. One of the world's main commercial roads ran right through the city, north and south, if you will. The city was only about 17 miles from Jerusalem, and it is thought to be the oldest city in the world. It was the Passover season, which means that thousands of pilgrims were making their way to Jerusalem. Pilgrims were passing right through Jericho. Now here's the kicker. Blind Bartimaeus knew this. And he also knew that religious people were more sensitive to the needs of helpless people who had to beg for a living. It's also possible that Bart Bartimaeus had heard that Jesus was in Jericho. Uh, that can be found in Luke chapter 18, verses 35 to 43. He may have heard uh, that um, 
Jesus was in Jericho. Good evening. God bless you. If so, he knew that his best chance to find Jesus would be to station himself at the city limits where Jesus would be passing as he left the city. Whatever the case, Bartimaeus had to beg for a living. So the text says that he sat by the main highway. It wasn't just any highway, sisters and brothers. He sat by the main highway begging. And what are we what are we saying here? A, a man must go where he knows Jesus is, where Jesus passes by. A man must go where he can hear Jesus or he may miss the chance of eternal life. Bartimaeus didn't care how he got there. He said, I'm going to get there if I can. And so he got to the main highway, and that's where he set up shop, if you will. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. You had better seek him while he may be found. So that is how we are setting up this particular text. As we go to verse 47, the first step to getting help is believing the reports about Jesus. Look at verse 47. Let's look at verse 47. The Bible says in this wise, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Sitting there, Artemis heard all kinds of noises coming from the people passing by. The noise of individuals, the noise of groups, the noise of whole caravans. He heard the noise of feet trampling. He heard the noise of animals. He heard folks' conversations. He heard laughter. He heard playing among the children. He heard all kinds of talking, serious, jovial, commercial, Vain, rude, off-colored, but then something happened. The size of the crowd and the noise and talk changed. The passers-by became a throng, a multitude of people, and the noise and talk were about Jesus, the one whom he had hoped and longed for. Bartimaeus had been blind for years, maybe for life, with no, and I mean zero hope, of ever seeing again. Apparently, he was a beggar with no one to care for him. But then the most glorious event of his life happened. He heard about one named Jesus of Nazareth who was claiming to be the true Messiah. And for the first time in his life, hope swelled up in him. He knew there was a possibility that he might be healed and enabled to see. From the very first day that he had heard about Jesus, he had hoped and longed for the chance when Jesus might pass by. Why? Glad you asked. Because he believed the testimonies about Jesus. Whose report are you going to believe? 
believe the report of the Lord. Re believe the testimonies about Jesus. It is no secret what God can do. If he did it for others, he'll do it for you. But note another fact. Sitting there by the road as Jesus passed by, mind you, he's blind. He had no way to know that it was Jesus. He couldn't see him. He could only hear people walking and talking. When he heard people talking about Jesus, he believed it was he. He believed and trusted what he heard. And I come to tell you, sisters and brothers, on this beautiful Wednesday evening, we must believe the report, the testimony about Jesus. Please put that in the comments. We must believe the report. We must believe the report. All Bartimaeus ever had was what he heard. He had never seen or been around Jesus. He only knew the testimony people were sharing. Let me pause parenthetically to ask you a question. When was the last time you gave a testimony about Jesus? When was the last time you told somebody about the goodness of the Lord in your life? All of us have a testimony. And I've said this quite often during our moments of the call to Christian discipleship. You may be the only Bible that somebody reads. Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus had to go by what he heard. He had to go by the reports, the testimonies, if you will, of what was being said about Jesus. And I come to tell you, we cannot be ashamed to tell others about Jesus. If he saved you, redeemed you, set you free, you've got a story to tell. If I was in church, I would tell you, look down your road and tell somebody, I've got a story to tell. I've got a story to tell. Let's look, let's continue on with verse 47. The second step to getting help is acknowledging personal need. That's the second step to getting help, acknowledging personal need. As soon as Bartimaeus, watch this, as soon as Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, heard that it was Jesus, he instantly began shouting out to attract Jesus, creating as much fuss, as much noise as he could above the crowd. Now, mind you, the crowd is already going bananas. Because at this point, Jesus is passing by. So the noise is getting up there. And so now, Bartimaeus is turning up the volume. Bartimaeus acknowledged his need and confessed it publicly. Bartimaeus acknowledged his need 
and confessed it publicly. He didn't come to Jesus secretly or quietly by asking someone close by to appeal to Jesus on his behalf. He had a desperate need and he accepted the fact. He wanted the help of Jesus no matter what. And there was a question, and you just took the words right out of my mouth. What are we going to do to get his attention? What are we going to do to get his attention? Note these two facts. The text says he cried out to the son of David. This was an in, this was an inadequate concept of Jesus. But Bartimaeus approached Jesus as his hope, his savior, his deliverer, his leader. He used what knowledge he had of Jesus and cried out to him. He had to get his attention in some way. But here's the truth of the matter. None of us have an adequate concept of Jesus when we first come to him. No one understands Jesus until after they are saved and have received the Holy Spirit into their life and learned of Christ. So as you get saved, you, you continue to learn more about him, more, more about Jesus. That's what the hymn writer said, more about Jesus, more of his love who died for me. The second fact, he cries out for mercy, not for anything else. Do you believe that? He's blind and he's a beggar. But he didn't cry out for housing. He didn't cry out for clothes. He didn't cry out for food. He cried for his most basic need to be met. Lord, have mercy. The Bible says this poor man cried and the Lord heard him, good God Almighty, and saved him out of all his trouble. He didn't ask for anything outlandish. He said, Lord, son of David, have mercy. Which brings us to our third step to getting help. As we look at verse 48. The third step to getting help is pers persisting and per and preserve preserving rather after Jesus. You got to be persistent. Now watch this. Look at verse forty-eight. Watch this. Then many warned him. Shut up. Be quiet. Hush, stop talking. When my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut. If you can hear my voice, clap once. Threw in some teacher. <laughs> but the people wanted him to be quiet. The people wanted him to hush. But the more they told him to be quiet, <laughs> The more they told him to be quiet, he cried out even more. Son of David, have mercy 
on me. Many among the crowd tried to hush Bartimaeus, but he was desperate and determined and in dead earnest. He would not be discouraged. He would not be silenced. He would not be stopped. You ought to type that right there in the comments. I won't be silenced. If you're trying to get God's attention, you, you get it by any means necessary. I won't be silenced. I won't be quiet. I won't shut up. I'm going to make my noise. He repeatedly cried, Son of David, have mercy on me. The point is that Bartimaeus persevered. He had a need, sisters and brothers, and would not stop seeking to have his need met. Now, watch this. The voices raised against him were many. How many folks you've been trying to get Jesus' attention for so long and, and, and the naysayers in your life been trying to shut you up? been trying to silence you. Bartimaeus' faith stood against all the voices of discouragement and against the feelings of so many that it was useless. Perseverance is the answer to desperate need. Preserving in prayer, Preserving in faith. For everyone, this is Bible. There's Bible for that. For everyone that asks, receives. Those who seek, find. And to him that knock, it shall be open. Did y'all know that worldly voices will rise up against us? Worldly voices will always rise up against us when we when they recognize that we have a desperate need to go after God for something. You've been in deep prayer and fasting about a situation, about somebody. And folk in your inner circle, quote unquote, want you to be silent. Worldly voices will rise up against us, attempting to pull us away, to tell us all is, they want to tell you it's useless. They want to tell you it's, it's pointless to keep crying out to God. He don't hear you. He don't want to bring you out of that. Those worldly voices will rise up against us, attempting to convince us that our need is too desperate to be met. To try to tell you that what you desire what you need from God is too much. This fourth attempt is absolutely crazy. Then they want to encourage you to try the work, try their way. You've been trying it your way for so long. You've been doing it. You've been you've been praying and you've been praying and you've been praying. Go ahead and cut them out. Go ahead and flatten a tire. Go ahead and throw a brick at them. Go ahead and do all these other things. 
that old slew foot devil will try to make you do anything to cause you to dim your light. Sisters and brothers, you got to keep letting your light shine, even in the midst of foolishness. Starlights had a line in one of their songs that they, they sing. I'm going to let my little light shine. I'm going to let my little light shine. So again, the world will use those voices. I was going to use a, a wrestling reference there, but I'll leave that alone. <laughs> We're still in verse 48. Persistence always. Please type this in the comments. This is good. Persistence always grabs God's attention. Persistence always grabs God's attention. Persistence always grabs God's attention. All right, so we're still in verse 48. He all note Jesus's question. He already knew what the blind man wanted. He had probably heard him as well. But he wanted the blind man to experience persistence. Here's a question on the floor. Why does Jesus teach perseverance instead of just meeting our need immediately? I'm going to give you at least five reasons why. I'm trying to slow down for the note takers. Persistence always grabs God's attention. Why does Jesus teach perseverance instead of just meeting our needs right away? I'm going to give you five reasons. I'm going to give you five reasons, five good Baptist reasons. <laughs> Number one, having to persevere sharpens, increases, and grows our faith. Having to persevere sharpens, increases, and grows our faith. It teaches, beloved, endurance, experience, and hope. Number two, having to persevere sharpens and makes us more aware of our minds. Let me say that again. That was deep. Having to persevere sharpens and makes us more aware of our minds. In other words, it gives us more time for thought, prayer, and meditation, and for, and for the searching of the truth about ourselves and our needs. Number three sort of coincides with number two. Having to persevere teaches us to pray and to seek God more. Some of us want the microwave blessings. Woo! Some of us want microwave blessings. God says, I want you to keep on praying and I want you to keep seeking me. I want you to keep praying and I want you to seek me more. That's why I'm teaching you perseverance. That's why I want you to persevere. I could easily give you this blessing as soon as you ask.
But no, I need you to persevere. Watch this. Number four. Having to persevere gives us more part in his work and worship. This is not a need on God's part, but it's a need on your part. Serving God is a great privilege, which he allows. Number five, having to persevere allows more time for a greater number of people to be reached with God's power. Having to persevere allows more time for a great number of people to be reached with God's power. Perseverance is a greater witness for God. When God answers and moves, more people are aroused to observe God working. All right, so these are the five reasons, at least, that Christ teaches us to persevere. The fourth step to getting God to getting help is to eagerly expecting to receive Jesus' help. Let's look at verses 49 and 50. So after Bar blind Bartimaeus is persistently crying out to the Lord to have mercy on him. The Bible says, your Bible says, so Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. There are two significant things that happen here. Two significant things happen in this port, this portion of the text. Number one, Jesus stood still. That's the first significant thing that happens here. The crowd must have been huge. Jesus had to sin for the man. Jesus stood still, number one, because of the man's need. He could not reach Jesus by himself. Jesus stood still, secondly, because the man had persisted in, in crying despite many opposing him. He stood still because Jesus never turned away from a person who cried for help. It's comforting to know that every time I need him, that's what the hymn writer said, and just the time I need him, he's always there. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him. The Bible says, 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Comforting to know that he's not slack in his promises to us. So, as I told you earlier, two significant things happen in this portion of the text. Number one, Jesus stood still. The second significant thing 
that happens. Blind Bartimaeus cast his aside his coat. He cast aside all his impediments. This was an interesting act. Bartimaeus wanted nothing to hinder him from reaching Jesus as fast as he could. All in one motion, he cast aside the hindrances, sprang to his feet, and moved toward Jesus. The stress is on his eagerness to reach Jesus and allowing nothing to hinder him. When was the last time you were eager to get to Jesus? He's calling for us to lay aside whatever is hindering us to eagerly seek after him. Whatever you, whatever is going on in your life that hinders you from eagerly going after God, put it to the side. And that's a lesson for us. How few are so eager. How many hang on to that which hinders and hampers and keeps them from reaching Christ? Ephesians 4.22, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, according to deceitful lust. That you put on the new man. All right. The fifth step to getting help is to request precisely what you need. Call him up and tell him what you want. Here are several facts here. I'm sorry, let's read verses 51 and 52. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, Rabboni means teacher, that I may receive my sight. So here are the facts that come out of this portion of scripture. Number one, Bartimaeus knew exactly what he needed and had no problem asking for what he needed. He was not like many of us who are vague in their prayers and requests. He examined himself and knew exactly what he needed. The Bible says, in all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, Believe you shall receive. Bartimaeus knew exactly what he needed. Secondly, Bartimaeus needed, however, to make a personal confession to Jesus. Of course, Jesus knows what Bartimaeus needs. But the Lord's knowing about the man's need was not enough. The man had to make a personal confession to Jesus. Bartimaeus needed to confess his faith in Jesus' power for the sake of the other standing there. They needed to know that it was faith in Jesus that saved this man. The word for Lord, Rabboni, means my master. 
It is a title of reverent respect. Note the possessive, my. Bartimaeus' heart reached out to Jesus, desiring to belong to him. A specific request got a specific answer. Verse 52, then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. The final step to getting help is following Jesus. He says, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Note what Jesus told Bartimaeus. Go thy way. But Bartimaeus did not go. Not after his master had touched him. Bartimaeus clung to Jesus. Nothing was going to pry him away. He followed Jesus in the way. Several lessons here, and, and then I'll be out of your way. There is a heart of appreciation of being grateful and thankful. There is the idea of genuineness of conversation. He followed through. There is the idea of growing wanting to learn more and more about this savior of men. There is a testimony of loyalty and faithfulness. The world behind us, the cross before us. We've got to make that decision to follow Jesus. And with that, three lessons that we learn from this text. If you don't remember anything else you heard tonight, here are three takeaways that you can take away from our lesson tonight. Number one, persistence in faith. In our text, we learn about the persistence of blind Bartimaeus. Despite being rebuked by the crowd, he continues to call out to Jesus. This teaches us the importance of being persistent in our faith and prayers, even when faced with discouragement and opposition. You gotta make the, the decision to remain persistent in your faith, even when there are people in your ear, even when there are people in your group chat, even when there are people in your DMs telling you otherwise. Stay persistent. Second lesson, Jesus' compassion and attention. The text shows us Jesus' compassion and attentiveness. When Bartimaeus calls out, Jesus stops and asks for him to be brought forward. This highlights that Jesus listened to and cares for those who seek him earnestly. No matter what your social status is, no matter how much money is in your bank account, no matter your circumstance, Jesus listens to and cares for me. Please put, type that in the comments. Jesus listens to and cares 
for me. I know I've got a witness that can testify that he listens to and cares for me. That's an affirmation that you can take with you on, on this journey. Finally, faith leads to healing. Um, Jesus tells Bartimaeus in the text that his faith has healed him. Bartimaeus' belief in Jesus' power and his act of faith led to his healing. This teaches us that genuine faith in Jesus can bring about transformation and healing in our lives. Genuine faith. Genuine authentic, if you will, authentic faith can bring about transformation and healing to our lives. Amen. 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 Well, looking ahead to August respite. Listen, sisters and brothers. July was something else. We've had a very trying several weeks as a church body. And so this August break could not come at a more pertinent time. Let me say this to you, sisters and brothers. Let me say this to you. You are no good to anybody if you do not take your self-care as a priority. I encourage you to make your self-care a priority during this August respite. We are only gathering, barring that there are no funerals or anything of that nature. We are only gathering for our Sunday morning worship. There are a few other events that are going on in the month of August. But for the most part, we will only gather for Sunday morning worship. And so I encourage you, my sister, my brother, to take advantage of this time to get some well-needed, well-deserved rest. I said this in the email to the Bible study group who gets the emails of these PowerPoints the morning prior, uh, about a few hours early before uh, the Bible study. Your first ministry is you. You are your first ministry. Please, I implore you to take care of yourself. I promise you, you're no good to anybody if you yourself are not well rested. But I will give you some news about what our Bible study series will be when we return in September. Barbecue chicken alert. Barbecue chicken alert. Barbecue chicken alert. Barbecue chicken alert. <laughs> So whenever Shaq says barbecue chicken alert, uh, that means that something crazy has happened um, during a basketball game. And um, But I, I use that to announce what our Bible study series will be 
when we return in September. Barbecue chicken alert. Oh, I'm sorry. Chicken alert. The model church, a strong church. We will be in the book of First Thessalonians for the first portion of our fall Bible study series. I'm looking forward to this teaching in the fall. Um, and you all are getting a first glimpse of what it will be. And so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you all um, as we prepare to return in the month of September. You all just continue to be amazing. Thank you so much um, for how you continue to um, uh, hang around during these Bible studies. Um, I want to ask everyone to please keep Sister Mother Mom Pearl Burton and her family in prayer. Um, her oldest brother in California passed. Um, and I know that family has been experiencing a lot um, of deaths this year. And so I'm asking everyone to please wrap your arms around Sister Pearl. If you have her number, you know, um, maybe not today, but probably tomorrow or something, give her a call. Just let her know that her Bible, her Bible study crew um, is definitely keeping her in prayer. Um, continue to keep um, um, Sister Anita Cooper Gurley and her family in prayer. Continue to keep Deaconess Ann in your prayers. So good to see Deaconess Ann in Bible study this evening. Um, continue to keep her in your prayers. Keep all, everyone that you see, you know, I was going to mention this earlier, but it, this it, it's a little weird, you know, just uh, seeing Deaconess Ann um um in the uh in the frame and not deacon izzy so um i'm continuing to uh pray for you deaconess and um as you navigate this uh new normal um and pray for everyone pray for all that you see that are here in the zoom space those that are in facebook land even those that you don't see uh, my dear friend, Reverend Brent Brown, has a statement that he says that I think is very apropos. Pray for everybody so that way you don't miss anybody. Amen. Pray for everybody and that way you don't miss anybody. And I believe that's uh, pertinent for us. Um, if all hearts and minds are clear, uh, let's pray together and let's uh, depart from this virtual space. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time of study. Thank you that your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you for your word that is made flesh, that was made flesh and dwells among us, and we continue to behold his glory. Thank you for all of those who have gathered in on this Zoom space, Father. Thank you for those that have gathered in Facebook land, God. Thank you for just this privilege, this opportunity to gather around your word. For your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Your word have we hid in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. God, as we depart from this virtual space, we ask that you would continue to keep our hearts our minds close to you. Help us, God, to seek you while you may be found. Seek you, seek you, God, as the deer panteth after the water brook. Our souls long after you. So, God, thank you for continuing to uh, extend your hand of grace and mercy upon each and every one of us. Thank you that your hand never left us. Thank you for keeping us even when we didn't keep ourselves. God, thank you that you're our shield. Thank you that you're our buckler. Thank you that you're our comforter. God, we're praying for uh, bereaved families. We're praying for families that are confounded to their homes, God. 
Uh, we're praying for those um, in nursing homes, in, in hospice care, God. We're praying, God, for everybody, God. We're praying that your spirit continues to hover over us in a way like never before. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we could imagine, ask or think, according to the power that works in us. God, we even still touch and agree uh, with Sister Ashley, God. We're continuing to pray for her, God, as she prepares uh, for her heart surgery. Her surgery, God, was moved mm -hmm. from Tuesday to Friday. And God, we're still praying that your healing power and your miracle working power will be prevalent in that place. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, be majesty, be dominion, be power, both now, henceforth, and forever. As we all come off mute together, we say together, Amen. 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 I, I love you all Bless so you much. All. Have a great evening, and God willing, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you this coming Sunday. Have a good evening, everyone. Take care. Have a good one. Right. Good night. Good night. Enjoy good your night. Night. Love you all. Take care. Everybody, I'm sorry.